As this says, we typically deliver this plan effectively, we'll go back to the point of making report, people will have better job opportunities and quality of the environment and will we'll achieve uh, those uh, better health to reduce the health inequalities. We will really understand our community better as part of that. We've launched, as, as you know, for the first time uh, since 2008, uh, <coughs> the survey, uh, which we'll be reporting on uh, in mid November. We're developing possibly collaboration, uh, and the starting point of that is having a real partnership and then signed up to the, to the pledges. And we'll ensure that our services are, are modern. We'll build in uh, the opportunities around digital opportunities for, for, for our communities, for our council, but also it's about making sure that in terms of delivering those outcomes, they've done the most economic and efficient way. As I said, our delivery plan, as this was produced, because uh, it's the one that's gone through the, through the previous uh, uh, committees, was in development. It's actually now in our to say on the survey going to, to for discussion as draft one uh, in cabinet next week. From October through to December, uh, the key point of that is really that we'd be expecting the coordinating committee and respective uh, uh, any working class in that country to scrutinise the priorities and the deliverables of that delivery plan so that it goes, goes hand in hand with consultation engagement partners but also fully challenged with the consultation programme for our medium term financial strategy as well. The aim then would be to have track to publish in February, which again coincides with the uh, setting of the, of the council's uh, budget. So, in terms of our initial scrutiny, uh, what we'll be looking for is we'd expect that from the delivery plan uh, being, being produced, we'd expect uh, a review of that, identifying the key principles, uh, the key priorities that could come from it. We will be organising you know, schedules of workshops around October and November to examine these in real detail. And these will probably be based on the thematic approach of both directors approach. They might be something for us to consider sharing how best to approach that, given the way that our current policy and performance committees are structured and that actually for the discussion and debate uh, this evening. Uh, with the idea that we, in, in December uh, we'd expect a report back uh, here uh, in order for it to contribute to the delivery plan so it informs uh, the, the next steps going forward into February. Here again just sets out the review the priorities and schedule. Clearly the, the, the role that we fulfil uh, contained within it in terms of phase two you will have again a even greater opportunity both to to scrutinise the, the delivery plan, but also to ensure that we have pre decision scrutiny around the whole of the, the 20 pledges as we go forward over the next five years. So our next steps uh, are here. Uh, we've got the coordinating committee this evening, which is what we've been reporting uh, to, to the committees. Uh, we would expect that from here there be a consistent process in order to undertake that scrutiny. Uh, and in terms of that, we would expect the coordinating committee to consider the prioritisation and as I said, make sure that we don't miss any opportunities in terms of either overlapping uh, certain aspects but making sure that we, we do the, uh, look at this in a thematic way to ensure we don't miss any opportunities that our residents would want. I think that's the final slide, Chair. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, does anyone want to make any points? I'll ask Joe any questions on that part.
Feedback from that part of it will go to Cabinet again in February. Um, now, as I understand it, as we understand it's 20 outcomes for the Council and its partners to, um, to uh, deliver on. And they're divided into three themes, which are people, business and environment. Um, the suggestion that I'm putting forward is that we form the uh, scrutiny in terms of workshops based around each of those three, three themes. So we have three workshops run over a short period of time, um, which will be open to all members of the non-executive members of the council to come and participate in, and executive members to come and act as well, so that's what they want. Um, the lead of these sessions will be taken by the lead officers, all the partners who are involved in each of the service areas, and that will give us the opportunity to scrutinise in some more depth um, what's being proposed and report back. And from those three workshops, um, we will have a consolidation report report to this committee, and I'm suggesting that we have that come back at the end of November's committee, and then that really forms the most important part of the agenda for that meeting. Um, now, the, as far as dates for the um, workshops, we would hope to get them done early November, and the dates that we would initially be looking at would be the dates that have been in the diary for those policy forms committees. But I will talk to the chairs and spokes of those committees to see if those dates are suitable. If not, we'll find other dates in the calendar which um, are as close to that as possible. And I'm pushing that forward. And Tom and I discussed this. I think we both agreed that this seemed to be the best way forward. Um, I'm wondering what committee's views are on that. Happy to listen to them. But it does seem to me that that is the way that we can have the most input into, into these. And I'm suggesting that we accept that as a way forward. And that I have discussions with the chairs and spokespersons of the other policy performance committees um, to get their agreement on dates. And first of all, on the, on the way forward, we uh, agree and then dates. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, Alice. Thank you, Chair. Um, given the scale of the plan, it's been four to five years, I assume to be quite a lot of depth in the delivery plan. So, how, have we got an idea of how much we've actually got to scrutinise given that at the moment it might be one session per? I think just worry about Yeah, how I think much time from, from, what, to from what we had the other day, I think, does it divide into six service areas in one, seven in another, and six in another? Is that quite right? Yes, sure. There's, 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 there's a range of it, though, and, 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 and to an extent, I certainly understand um, Councillor Gilbert's point of that the papers uh, earlier, which just before the nation, but uh, just like as I say, I think it will be of benefit to, um, to, to, to yourself, Chair, to, to other chairs, and also partners, when that's available. And it will be quite a large range of scope, but you're, but you're right, Councillor, in terms of the, the five years, we, we can therefore take some of this in five times. Uh, I think what we'd be looking for initially is that we'll see some key priorities that we begin to emerge uh, in, over, over the, coming, the coming weeks uh, as we feed back from, from firstly from Vassan Server, uh, which chimes again with, 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 with the opportunities for, for this particular scrutiny, uh, but also secondly, uh, we would also be receiving uh, the Chancellor's autumn statement uh, in November so we begin to see as well uh, how that fits with the, with the financial strategy as well. So I think in terms of, in terms of uh, Having an opportunity to, to prioritise share that thing, that any, anything that continues to be active and working with, we'll actually be able to do that quite, quite easily. Are you concerned that we might not get through the, in the session? The sessions would be about, we would be putting evening sessions on for two hours. I think if that does happen, Adam, uh, we we'll would probably have to reevaluate the need to the session. I am keen to get good scrutiny, but I am keen to get it done in such a way that it does actually get back into, um, into the plan for. Anybody else? No? Happy with that? Okay, so we agree that as a way forward. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is the um, quarterly performance management. And uh, Mike, Alan, I'm going to present this and then ask uh, Joe and Julie the officer if there's questions they need to ask us to provide questions. Okay? Thank you, Chair. I'll just keep this very short, but obviously following the last presentation about the uh, future plan, this is about the in-year um, corporate plan and the uh, performance management framework around that. So the report is a uh, standard report. It's a course, it's, it's providing the performance for the first quarter, which is from April to June, June. And this is a report that has uh, been presented to Cabinet, so it's now presented to the Committee for um, Scrutiny. Um, 
There's sort of great volume of reports as he's contained in the appendix, which details out all the key performance measures that are considered as part of the core of the plan. And obviously has the RAG, which is the red and the green rating for work performance up to against those measures. So um, I'll hand back to the chair now, obviously, if you have any questions specifically in relation to those measures. Clinical case for health checks isn't completely accepted by everybody. 
again, you're quite correct, quite more than the yeah, absolutely. Uh, but Public Health England have a different view. Uh, it's always the same in the, in the clinical world. Um, the evidence base is strong, but personal opinion also um, has a very strong part to play as well. Anybody else want to ask any questions? Um, I'd just like to make a couple of comments. One is that uh, we did talk about scrutiny and how we're so improving our ability to scrutinise our role. Um, and I'm pleased to see that a number of the forms indicators that are highlighted in this are actually the subject of um, uh, this panel work on task and finish work. We've got a cue as an impact in this committee, which is just got stuck. We've got you know, safeguarding, we've got the task of the measures, and they all are relevant. And I think some of the other um, committees have got things on the go as well. I'm not able to. Um, comment on those in detail, but I, I think it's a good sign that, that committees are picking up the areas of service that need to be looked at in more depth and actually doing that piece of work. And also um, that we asked for a set of forms indicators that were more easily understood and more, um, more reflective of what members want uh, to see, um, and I know that that work is underway. And also um, there's a proposal to uh, have a training session for members on understanding the forms and that's gone into the training series, I think, or is going to the training series. So, um, in the last bit, can I just ask you to um, note and accept the, the, uh, this report? Great, great, great. Next item on the agenda is um, a number of reports on financial management. And Tom, we're going to present those on you. Uh, and you guys will go straight through and if you call for rest and you might ask your question, but carry on straight through to. <laughs> Not a line Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, again, I just understand the outcome of the 2014 15, eh? just picking out some of the key headlines dotted on page 23. When this went to cabinet in July, it was the stage we were preparing the accounts that were published by the 30th of June. Since then, the accounts have been subject to external, external inspection. Uh, the cabinet calls have produced a report, and they were finding the report, which went towards the committee on Monday night this week. That came in accounts of unqualified people and unqualified value for money conclusion, which is excellent news. On the back of that, there were no changes to be made to the accounts which would affect the financial position. So in terms of the end of the year position of the current public calendar, it's unchanged after the order of the accounts. The accounts themselves were published this afternoon, because they have to be published by the 30th of June, June uh, 30th of September. The accounts were open today, so the year 2014 Closed. And we expect that this report now is sort of going on history, but just to give you the headlines, in terms of the revenue outset, it's a half million pound of spent. The balances at the end of the year are higher than expected, higher than the full count, which is very good news for it. On page 24, it goes through the detail of capital outset, and we expect on the year in terms of capital spend, and some of the key projects that were delivered during 2014 and 15. In terms of the collection, the collection that side of things, further good news on the council tax collection rate, which was higher in 2014 15 from 2013 14, and similarly on business rates. In terms of the level of sudden deaths, there was an increase in the 31st of March this year, but when we delved into that, a large chunk of that was due to the fact some accounts went out on the 29th, 30th, and 31st of March, which distorts the figures of the year end. But when you look at April 2000, back online in a few years. Okay, that's a quick run through for you all. As I say, there's more detail in the appendices there. The accounts have now been completed in 2014 and 2015. So you can't indicate if you'd like to speak with yeah, so Christina. I'd like to make a comment, Chair. I think it's pretty made. I'd like to thank Tom and his team for the work they've done to present the accounts this year. I've been a member of the Auditors Committee for a number of years, and quite a number of years, and this is the first year that I can remember in a long time that we've had an unqualified opinion in this disorder. When we have a qualified opinion, there's an issue within the account. I mean, that is reflected that we've been the most improved council, and I would like to admit to the fact that the, the thanks of this committee to our finance team, who are under great pressure on the work that they did, especially the fact is that this is always given us that opinion. And, and they spoke highly of the council team and the way that the council team did to support their external audits, which uh, Robin Baker and his team spoke very highly of our, of our officers. I think it needs to be minuted. Do you know if you minute it? You're not asking to be answered to a hand, Dave. It's very much. 
Thanks for coming here. Uh, it's, it's very appreciative, but I'd just like to point out that Council's never had an unqualified opinion on the case. The opinion coming out is the background comments made by the audit have been proved over the years, but we've never had an unqualified opinion. Not since 19. Yeah, it's just to explain to a simple to and as Leah said, a real person. Um, <laughs> at page 25, and I take no offence from that at all. No, the truth is the truth, that's right. <laughs> We're quite happy with that, we can take offence from it. Um, page 25, 2.7. Can you tell me why it's better to write off debts? Like when they're 0.42 million? Yeah. In terms of writing off the debts, once the debt has been collected, you should stay in the account. So if you look at the appendix, these are the accounts that have been written off, and most of them have been because the person unfortunately died, the company's gone bankrupt, so there's no possibility of collecting that debt. In. So at that stage, you have to write it off because it's not collected. Could you tell me why we weren't collected when the people were in the homes? Uh, no, look at page 56, 57, the details of cases there. Yeah. The, the short history of each of the individual cases which sets out why the debt is not collected, the reason behind it. So, so if you looked at number three, say, why wasn't it authorised until after the client's death? wasn't authorised. If the client was dead, why did you bother authorising it? Or whoever did it? And there's a few like that. I just and I'm not I'm not criticising, I'm just curious. I think perhaps I think perhaps Christina if Thomas is able to give you that in depth sort of detail, you might write to and provide it for you. Well, we've had it's unlikely to be able to answer yes, very detailed. Just check but we've had passive answers here, but they make no sense to me. There must be answers. Make, I mean, that must make sense, and why shouldn't you put me in? I think the point I'm making, Christina, is that there will be answers, but Tom might not necessarily have them in now, but we'll supply them to you. That's okay, so it's just point four two million. It's okay. Okay. Phil? Okay. 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 Coming back to that, I heard what Tom was saying about the period of when things went out from the start of the new year and this crossover over the year end. I'm looking at page 73. And it's something I used to look at this page on the uh, script committees. I'm looking particularly at the third reminders column, which is in the table at the top of the page, particularly the amount for families and well-being. And I used to say Mr. Flanagan used to come to various committees that I wasn't hounding people, but I did want to make sure that there was a fair, robust way of generally working with people to get this money in. And a third reminder to me suggests uh, uh, perhaps a letter with a larger type or stronger language or something, but it does seem a substantial amount that we have to keep gnawing at is probably the most uh, effective description I can think of. Uh, we had a team set up which was to deal with building and make sure that when we were positioned by a social worker through the system, that the people were given advice from the start that this is what we hope you will pay as your contribution. And that team, I think, maybe wrong, has moved around or been here in finance and was in social sciences now in finance. I'm not sure of his status now, but um, it seems to me that we do have to concentrate on bringing the expected revenue in as early and quickly as possible. Uh, that's actually on the next agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm that's my agenda item 8, which is 1560 by now. In terms of the, the reminder dates, they've been accelerated over recent years. So the first of my name goes out to the same in less than 10 days, so it is the process of having accelerated. In terms of the outstanding debts on the third reminder, you see a largest chunk related to families and well being, they are related to social care cases, a large number of which will be because they're negotiated with family or alternative you can pay to pay bills, could be related to engagement with health partners. So, so they are pursued through that route. Keep watching, thank you, Chair. Okay. Everybody okay? Everybody else asking okay. 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 Next item on the agenda are um, the policy for briefing papers, which I think we're all agreeing on how to get straight through. Joe, I've got 